Hello, welcome everybody to AP Physics, May 9th, 2013. We are talking about waves. Um, formulas for the waves are velocity is frequency times wavelength. Um, N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. That's called Snell's Law. And that's what I want to talk about today. To start out, we're going to talk about a lot. And then another one is N is C. Oops. C over V. And C is, you know, Soleritas, the speed of light in a vacuum, 3 times 78. And the first question is, which light goes that fast? Matt. Which light actually goes 3 times 78 in a vacuum? Wait. So yes, that's the right answer. All light does. So if we look at the get the electromagnetic spectrum here, cosmic rays, gamma rays, X rays, ultraviolet, infrared, short wave radio, long wave radio, those are all called light waves. They're all part of the electromagnetic spectrum. They all go three times ten to the eight meters per second. So they all have the same velocity. That's what you need to know. Now, do they have the same velocity? In different substances, no. Okay, so that will that will be that will change. Um, so this n here then is called the index of refraction, and what it is is this ratio of c over the velocity in a substance. Okay. So, if we have air and water, and those of you that were here yesterday, well, and even the days before, we talk about these wave fronts coming in, and you know, usually when you draw a ray, it would be you know perpendicular to these wave fronts. Okay. So this would be called, you know, the incident ray or one. And then when it hits this interface here, what happens? Well, does light travel slower or faster in water? Slower, right? No, it's slower. Light travels slower in water than in air. So what happens then is, you know, Huygens' principle talks about wavelets. This guy hits here first, slows down, but these have to stay in order. So then we get this bending, then we have another guy, bends more, and then finally they're all in, and then we've completed our bend. So you can see how this is you know, bending. So then what, what ends up happening is we bend towards the normal when we're going from less optically dense to more optically dense. And then when, when we want to talk about the relationship here, then this, th this angle and this angle are that angle and that angle. And so if we know these angles, and we don't know one of the indexes of refraction, you know, then we could figure that out or vice versa. So this here is the ratio of the speed of light and the velocity in the substance for whatever the incident ray is in. And then this one would be that same ratio here or whatever we would call the refracted ray is in. Okay? So, any questions about that? One thing you can notice if you look at the ends, just look at the formula. You know, n is 3 times 10 to the 8th. If you divide that by 3 times 10 to the 8th, what's that number? 1. So the index in a vacuum would be one, okay? 
So let's say we slow this down a little bit. Let's say it's, you know, 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 2 times 10 to the 8th. What would that equal? 1.5. And then if we go further down, you know, 3 divided by 1 is 3. So what can we say about this idea of the index of refraction as the number is bigger? What does it mean? It's going slower. And you can think of it as it has a greater effect on the ray. So if we look at these, so we're going to bend these. If this one bends this much, uh, it doesn't look like much of a bend. Is this one going to bend more or less? It's going to bend more, right? And then this one will bend even more. So this has more of an effect. It has a greater bend. I have a question. Okay, what's the question? I think we can't see light through a rock. You can see light through a rock. It's just really hard. No, no. <laughs> That's a joke. Okay, anyway. That'll be on the internet. It's going to go viral. Okay, so what happens then when we co go out of this substance? So this is going to be a thicker substance. What's going to happen here? Does it bend towards the normal? Well, our wave fronts, this guy is going to get to go faster, right? So it's going to bend this way a little bit. And then you're going to have two of them going faster, and then it'll bend this way, and then this way. So this bends away from the normal when you go from thicker to thinner. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Ooh. What happens there? Did you see that? What happened? No, that's a big thing. We better take a little look at that. So, let's say we have um, thin, thick, optically, drawing our normal right here. Okay. As I come into the ray here, this is always going to bend towards the normal. Do you agree? But if I take and I go this way, this is going to bend away from the normal. And if I change my angle, it's actually approaching this interface. So that's what you know you call where the two substances come together. It's an interface. What happens when I get right here? Well, that is the point that this angle away, fr away from the normal here, when my beam goes parallel on, or on the interface, then you, don't, then you wouldn't see the beam because it would be like going along. You, if you were over here and, and you, you would see the beam come out there. You wouldn't see it up here, you wouldn't see it up here, you wouldn't see it down here. You'd see it come right out the interface. You know, but that'd be at one specific, actual, like, perfect point. And as long as the interface and everything was everything perfect, you know, theoretically, you wouldn't see a beam. But what happens if you increase your angle to something that is... If the angle is greater than this... <laughs> Then we get what we call total internal reflection, which means, and, and I'll tell you, like, like there's always a reflection. So even along this one, you'll have a reflection, and and these the reflection will follow the principal law of reflection, which is the angle in incident and angle reflected is equal from the normal. You'll you'll get that a lot, but once you go past this critical angle. Then it's called total internal reflection, which means all the rays, all the light will be inside or will be reflected. That's called critical angle. And the formula for critical angle, that is sine theta critical, and this is N2 over N1. Okay, so N2 is the second, it's 
the second substance. So it's not that on your sheet. That's on your sheet, yep. Okay, now let me just ask you a real quick question. Okay, could you ever have a critical angle going from thinner to thicker? Could you ever have a critical yeah. angle? No, you couldn't. Because all you would ever do is get closer and closer to the to the normal. Until you know you're finally right on top of it. It's the other way where you where you start approaching the interface when you have that. And and even mathematically you would get a wrong number. Okay. So what does that have to do with anything? Well, have you seen fiber optics? Because that's what fiber optics use. They utilize this total internal reflection. And then they just send pulses of light down the fiber. And then you get this on off or you know zero one computer code with your flashes of light, and that's how you send information. Very efficient. And glass doesn't break down in water. Okay. So let's see if we can use some of this stuff. We can do a problem. Okay, so let's say that I have a beam of light. So I've got a beam of light coming in. Okay. And that beam of light has 575 nanometers, okay, and we'll say that this is air, and this is um, a slab. Well, yeah, let's say this is a slab. Okay, so we're not sure what it is, okay. Let's say that we have an angle of 28 degrees here. And the refract the refracted ray is twenty point four degrees. Okay. Here's my question. What is so N one is gonna be air, N two is what I'm wondering. Now I'll tell you, N one for air is basically what? Because one point zero 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 three nine or something like that. So the only time that you actually use an index of refraction for air is when you're coming from a vacuum. Okay, so let's see if you can do this. Okay, so then we just use Snell's law here and solve for N2 and we found that it was 1.347. Any questions? Okay, good. Here's the next question. Okay. What is the wavelength of light in the slab? So the first step we decided we we're going to do is figure out the velocity in the lab by using the index of refraction um, formula. So this is the velocity of the wave in a, in a slab, or in that slab. And so now we can use our velocity equals frequency times wavelength um, to figure out the wavelength, right? Because wavelength then is velocity in the slab divided by the frequency in the slab. But the question is, what's the frequency? Well, Josh said that frequency never changes. Is that true, everybody? Yes. Yes. So what we need to do then is look up here and figure out what the frequency is here and that'll follow along through the whole problem. So if we take our velocity formula, frequency then is velocity divided by wavelength. Frequency is 3 times 10 to the 8th in air divided by 5.75 times 10 to the negative 7th and what do we get for our frequency of this wave then? What is it? Times 10 to the negative 15th if we did our calculations correctly. So that frequency follows the wave wherever it goes. So we're going to put it in right down here. 
the wavelength then equals 2.2275 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1.917 times 10 to the negative 15th 1.917 times 10 to the negative 15th and we get our wavelength in the slab then is okay I did it differently I got 4.27 times 10 to the negative 7th <coughs> which when you divide by these two Yeah, this is a positive. Oops. Oh yeah, that's what we got right there too. Positive. Okay. So our that is our final answer. Do we agree with that, everybody? I do find that first frequency. Well, it turns out our calculator calculations are wrong. This uh, frequency is actually what now? 5.22 times 10 to the what? 14th. 14. But that frequency follows all the way down. 5.22 times 10 to the 14th. And this is actually right though, with the right numbers. Okay, now we're going to have another way to do it that will help us solve this in five seconds? 30 seconds. Uh, right. Right. Yeah, 29 point. Okay, yeah, so here's the next question. So here's the incident ray, and it's at 29.7 degrees from the normal. It's refracted. First thing I want to know is what is this angle? This is plastic, and the index for refraction is 1.49. And then I want, to, I want to know what the wavelength is in the plastic. Okay, just for the first part, again, just use Snell's Law, simplify for theta, and for that I got 19.42 degrees. You guys agree with that? Okay. And then for the second part, instead of going through all the math as a bunch of small problems, if you just took it, if you just look at these two formulas like this. And then you just take this and put it in there. Then you get N equals C over frequency times wavelengths. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and then we're solving for wavelengths. So in order to solve for that, you'd have to go like this. C over frequency times N. And that's the simplified, or that's the quick way to do that. Um, and you just plug in your numbers. So, 3 times 10 to the 8th, the frequency, did we have, oh, we didn't have the frequency though, did we? I guess, so you'd have to find the frequency, so you could say, you could put in another formula, velocity is frequency times wavelength, frequency is V divided by wavelength. So you could put that in there if you'd like. But then I don't know if it actually becomes shorter or longer or what. So we'd have to find velocity. Well, we know the velocity in air would be 3 times 10 to the 8th um, divided by whatever our initial wavelength is. 6.79 times 10 to the 7th. 6.79 times 10 to the negative 7, and then the index is 1.49, yeah that's easier, and then there's your new wavelength, put all those numbers into your calculator and you would get your wavelength, which I got 4.56 times 10 to the negative 7, is that what you guys get? Meters, okay. So I expect this to be done here by tomorrow. We've got a beam of light. Okay. We've got a beam of light. 
615 nanometers. Okay. And this is water. And this is glass. Okay. Um, the angle of incidence here is 41 degrees. Okay. The, the index for water is 1.33. And the index for this class... No. Uh, I'll tell you here in a, in a little bit. This is what I want you to know. I want you to figure out. A. The V in glass. The angle of refraction. Um, the wavelength in the glass. And the critical angle for glass into air. Okay. Glass into air. I gotta figure out what this N is for this glass and I'll put that up here. 1.66. This is flint glass. Okay, see you tomorrow.